Now in question number two, I've drawn out the graph of the curve y equals 1 over 3 lots of 1 plus 2x. And it's this shaded area here that is spun about the x-axis and generates a solid, something like this, okay? Almost like the bell of a trumpet, say. So we've got to find the volume, the volume of revolution. And you should know that the volume of revolution, V let's say, is given by pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x, going between two limits. And in this particular example, the limits are minus a quarter to a half. So put that in as minus a quarter to a half. Now, moving on then, what we've got is we've got pi times the integral then from minus a quarter to a half and we've got to substitute for y, y being the equation here. Now if we square that we're going to get 1 over 3 all squared which is 1 ninth and that's a constant so it's going to look better put out the front here. Okay so that's pi over 9 when I square that 3 there. And then we have 1 squared which is 1 all over 1 plus 2x all squared. Alright, so that's 1 plus 2x all squared, and don't forget, integrated with respect to x. I'll remove this now because it's just in the way, but uh, hopefully you can picture what's going on. Okay, so we'll just move that out the way. So, to integrate this then, what I'm going to do is use substitution. Some of you might know that you can do this by recognition. But uh, as I say, I'll just do this for substitution as an example, just to get you into that idea as well. So what I'm going to do is let u equal the 1 plus 2x. So I'll just go up here and say let u equal 1 plus 2x. And the usual way, what we do is first of all we find du by dx. So differentiating this with respect to x gives 2. And then I need dx by du, so dx du is going to be one half. So I would have pi over nine, then the integral, okay, and this becomes one over u squared, so one over u squared. And remember that dx is the same as dx over du multiplied by du. So dx over du is a half, so put that in as a half, and du there. You'll notice I haven't put the limits in yet. We need to work out what the limits are. So we can do this by just saying that when x is the lower limit here, minus a quarter, we can substitute that up into the equation here. So it'd have 1 plus 2 times minus a quarter. So that's going to be 1 minus a half, which is going to be a half. So therefore u would equal 1 half. And similarly, when we take the upper limit, 1 half here, that's when x is a half, and we substitute it into the equation up here, we have 1 plus 2 halves, which is another 1. 1 and 1 is 2. So we have u equals 2. So the new limits then go between 1 half and 2. So cleaning this up, we now have, we could, well, we can take out this half out the front. So we have pi over 18. Okay. And then we have the integral of 1 over u squared, which I'm going to rewrite as u to the minus 2 with respect to u. And that's going between a half and two. So in the usual way, we would add one to the power and divide by the power in integrating u to the minus two. So integrating that then, adding one to the power gives u to the minus one and dividing by minus one would give minus 1 over u. Because you've got to remember that u to the minus 1 is 1 over u. Alright, so we'll close that bracket off and that's going between a half and 2. Okay, so we'll just move this up. Alright, and what have we got now? 
we've got pi over 18 and we now need to just substitute our limits in. 2 goes first, so we've got minus 1 over 2, minus a half. And then we have minus, and we now substitute the half in. So we've got 1 over a half, which is 2. So we have minus another 2. OK? Tidying this up, we have 2 minus a half, which is 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, so that becomes pi over 18 multiplied by 3 over 2. The 3's cancel, so 3 into 3 goes 1, 3 into 18 goes 6, so when we write that out we now have pi over 12. So it's pi over 12 and the units could be written as units cubed. All right. And that's the volume, the volume of revolution. OK. So, that's the end of part A. So moving on to part B then. Now in part B, let's just call back the graph, OK. There it is here, OK. We've got our paper weight that we're given, and we're told that the distance from here to here is 3 centimetres. And this is related to the volume that we generated from spinning this shaded portion around the x-axis. Now to do this, what you've got to notice is that this distance from minus a quarter to a half is a distance of three quarters of a unit. So I'll just put that in there, that that's three quarters of a unit. Now what we have is similar solids. And you can see that by timesing 3 quarters by 4 gives 3 units, 3 centimetres. So the length scale factor is 1 to 4. So if I just put here that the length scale factor, OK, scale factor is in the ratio 1 to 4, OK, then Bec when you're dealing with similar volumes, the volume scale factor, you should already know this uh, from, say, GCSE work, but the volume scale factor is always the cube of the ratio of the length. So that would be 1 cubed to 4 cubed. And so 1 cubed is 1, and 4 cubed is 64. So in fact, this volume, the new volume of the paperweight, is going to be 64 times the volume of what we had here. So in other words, the volume of the paperweight okay, is now going to equal 64 times pi over 12. And if you work that out, you'll find that you get 16 pi over 3 and that would be centimetre cubes. And that brings us then to the end of part B.